As was previously mentioned, the while loop is the simplest of the loops logically, but it's not the one that's used the most. That distinction goes to the for loop in pretty much every language that has a for loop, including Scala. And the reason for that is because the for loop is typically very good at expressing uh, simple types of things that we want to express, and it's not nearly as error prone as the while loop can be. To understand this, let's go ahead and let's look at what a for loop can do. So the basic syntax is for, and then we'll give a variable name here. This can actually be a pattern, so it could be something more complex. We'll come back to that later. And then I give a collection. Now, our first example in the while loop was we counted from 0 to 9 and printed it out. If I want to do that with a for loop, I can simply say this. We would read this as 4i in, this is arrow that points to the left, is often read as in, 0 to 9, print line i. And there you go. It prints those values. So as you can see, it's very simple. Unlike the while loop, I didn't have to declare a var. I didn't have to remember to put in an increment. The things that I could have easily messed up in my while loop aren't here. This is very simple and straightforward. So the question is, what's really going on here, though? It turns out that this for loop is actually what would often be referred to as a for each loop. It's iterating through a collection. This 0 to 9, if we just type it in, is something called a range. It's another type of sequence, just like our arrays and lists. And as you can see, it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Exactly what you'd expect given the description of it. We can also build ranges by using the until keyword. And I said keyword, that's actually an incorrect statement. These are not keywords in here. These are methods that are available on the int. So 0 to 9 was really 0 0.2 of 9. There is a to method on int that takes another int and gives us back a range. So the for loop is simply iterating through that. And we can demonstrate this by making, for example, a list of, of numbers. And we don't really care what these numbers are. But I can do for i in lst print line i, and I get the numbers from that list in their order. So there's nothing really special about the whole 0 to 9. It's just a shorthand for making a collection of numbers that we can run through. And it's very useful for doing for loops, because a lot of times we're going to do our for loops where we're counting. As an example function of this, Let's write a function that we'll call eval poly. The idea here is this is a function that evaluates a polynomial. So the polynomial is going to be represented as an array of elements. So coefficients is an array of double. And when I evaluate this, I'm going to pass in the coefficients, and I'm going to pass in the x value. And it's going to give me back a double. Let's talk a little bit more about these coefficients. So the idea is that if we had the polynomial 3 times x squared plus 2 times x minus 5, I would represent that as the array of 3 comma 2 comma minus 5. 3 for the coefficient on the square, 2 for the coefficient on the linear term, and minus 5 for the constant uh, term. If this had been cubic, there would have been another value in here. <clears throat> if there are any terms that are missing, we would put in zeros. 
So that's the general idea. And I want to make it so this function will evaluate this coefficient at the value of x. So how could we do this? Well, one way to do this would be I'm going to declare a var for the sum. And we'll start that off at 0. And it's that sum that I want to give back. And then I'm going to have a for loop that's going to go through the indices of the coefficients. So i in. Now I can express the, the indices as either 0 until coefs.length. Or it turns out there is a nice little method called indices that gives you back a range of the indexes that are valid on something. And what I want to do inside of this for loop is increment the sum by the appropriate amount. And what is that appropriate amount? Well, it's going to be coefs sub i times, and then I need to raise x to the power of the length of this array minus 1 minus i. Now, one way to do that is to use the math.pow function. This isn't necessarily the most efficient way to do it. We'll come back and look at more efficient approaches in just a bit. So I can take math.pow and raise x to the power of, as I said, I want this to be coefs.length, which would be 3 in this case because we have that. But of course, my top power is only a 2. So I'm going to subtract 1. And I'm also going to subtract i, because as i gets bigger, the first one should be raised to the 2. The next one should be raised to the 1. The next one should be raised to the 0, which would give us 1. And print line eval poly of the array 3, 2, minus 5. And a nice easy place to evaluate this would be 1. We can run it, see if we have any typos in there. 0, which happens to be the answer, because when it's 1, this is 1, and that is 1. So we have 3 plus 2 minus 5, which should be 0. So. Quick introduction to for loops, the fact that they are actually for each loops, they go across a collection, and we have written a little program that uses them.